What's up everyone, my name is Eric Pinos and I'm a technologist and residence at Game Theory Group. And today we're going to be doing a deep dive into Origin Protocol. So we start with the abstract of what Origin Protocol is and they use Ethereum blockchain and the interplanetary file system to allow the creation and booking of services and goods without traditional intermediaries. So what they're going for is they're going for the well-known gig economy, which is the trend that has come within the past couple of years where people that have assets can put those assets on a marketplace for other people to use. So things like Airbnb with houses, things like Uber with cars, even other things like freelancers offering their time and their services. So what Origin Protocol wants to do is they want to create open source tool sets that would allow anyone to create these marketplaces from scratch without needing to rely on a third party service like an Uber or an Airbnb that would take the fees. So essentially you would cut out the middleman there. Critical transactional data such as pricing and availability stored on the blockchain. That's important because that ensures the immutability of it. However, they also go in to say that the metadata, like the descriptions, images, reputation, anything else, would go into IPFS. So IPFS is a decentralized file system that's being developed as a concurrent open source project by a different team, but you can link into it and use it in your own open source projects. So that's what Origin is going to do. They're not going to store the images and the metadata directly onto the Ethereum blockchain because that would be very costly for Ethereum to do. However, IPFS kind of handles that. So what they would be doing here is they would store the pricing and availability on Ethereum and an IPFS hash to the description of whatever listing someone would make along with the image of that listing and the other metadata. Interesting thing to note, non-transactional communication says that will be done off chain. So whereas like Uber and Airbnb, you know, you get the text message saying, hey, your listing's ready or communication between the buyer and the seller. The Uber uses like Twilio to kind of mask that direct phone number. It doesn't look like Origin's getting into that. It looks like they're going to let you communicate with the buyer separately and give you some kind of like way to contact them, like some like an email or a phone number. It says that all listing and transaction data is public by default, but sensitive information can be encrypted and released to confirm buyers. So this is, would be once you make that transaction, it puts you in contact with the buyer and seller. Interesting that they mentioned new cipher as a possible route that they would go. So the front end app is an open source HTML and JavaScript application that integrates with MetaMask, MISC, Parity, or Toshi, any Ethereum browser. So if I have an Ethereum browser, I can log right into it just by um, opening up the page. I don't need to create a separate account. It automatically uses my Ethereum account. The idea is that multiple people can create their own front end for whatever specific use case they want to do. So maybe I want to have one that just shows houses or someone wants to just have one that just shows cars or just in a different language, uh, any of these things. But the important part is that they'll all have the same shared data layer. So anyone that creates a new front end won't have to start from scratch, which is really useful in the gig economy, which has network effect problems, sort of chicken or egg, like which comes first. In this case, you'll have an already existing user base, but you'll be finding a new way that these users can buy or sell or interact with each other. Going a bit into the developer tools, Origin wants to build Origin.js, which is a JavaScript library for interacting with these listings. That's what's going to help people build these front-end dApps that interact with the Origin. They want to build the standards for schema. So in order for it, in order for all these different projects to have a shared database layer, they're going to have to be able to communicate with each other, which means that their data is going to have to look similar to each other. And so they're building out the standards for this. It's like, what are the rules for how you make a proper listing? and also how you can extend to add your own custom categories if the kind of marketplace you're building has special requirements. They're also building out validators to help with validation of the listings, like how do you prove these listings are real, and notification tools. They will encourage users to identify themselves publicly through Facebook or social media. So an origin user could publish their public key on Facebook or Twitter and then cryptographically sign their listings with their private key. So this would help with identifying that the person that you're renting out your place to is actually a real person and not a bot. 
They also want to work with other services being built on top of Ethereum like Civic or Uport that are already looking at the identity management issue. And that's where things get really interesting because you can integrate ways of verifying things like physical addresses um, where Civic or Uport would send a postcard with a special code to that address which would they would then sign onto the chain to prove that they own that address. So this is very helpful for things like listing homes or cars that you could prove these, these things out. Now for the golden question, what does the origin token actually do? It says the origin token will be introduced to create crypto economic incentives to the origin platform. So origins put in some mechanisms of minting and distribution of origin tokens so that people that are using the platform will want to continue using the platforms. For example, developers that earn origin tokens through the business models or through grants that origin is giving out to spur further development of origin. Fraud and spam prevention, that's going to be a big issue for Origin because they don't have the benefit like Uber or Airbnb does to just remove listings whenever they want. That's the whole point of it being decentralized that they no one company has that level of power over the network. So what do you do in the cases where there is fraud or spam? Well, the way you normally do it in a decentralized system like this is with a method called deposit challenge vote where the lister would put up a certain amount of origin token as collateral and then if it's flagged as potentially uh, spam or fraudulent it'll be put up to a community vote where people will vote on whether or not yes this listing is spam or this listing is not spam and the winner of the vote or the community vote will get the tokens of the that was given as collateral so this is supposed to incentivize good behavior on the network. One, because it's uneconomical to post a blatantly fraudulent or spam account. And two, because me as a honest person that's using this, I can make some extra token by filtering through the network and being one of the people that's going through it. Other ways of incentivizing the growth of the network that Origin Token is exploring is with rewards points for early adopters. So they have a, an amount that they're going to be giving of Origin Token to people that sign onto the platform just for using the platform, just for being on the platform. And these awards are going to diminish over time, much how like Bitcoin mining diminishes over time, the reward that's giving out from that um, until that reward eventually becomes zero and then the network will just sustain itself. The same thing will happen with referrals where it's a program that offers gradually decreasing token award sizes over time as a way of uh, incentivizing people to refer others to the network. So a big piece of why Origin wants their own token is because of governance. What it means by this is that they want to give Origin token holders the ability to decide the future of Origin. So they themselves as a company won't necessarily be the sole stakeholders in Origin's future. The way this works in a token ecosystem is that the owners of the token will be given a vote and the vote could either be per address that holds a token or it could be weighted based off of how much Origin token you hold in your wallet. And then the community votes could be anything from where the next developer grant goes to or to how are we going to change the standard or the schema for how listings are going to be or pretty much anything. It could be once this thing is like launched and once the voting starts taking place, the voting could be done to change any aspect of the system. But that usually requires its own token because if you just did it based off of Ethereum addresses as a whole, then people that aren't, aren't using Origin would get a say in how Origin evolves. So that's why they want to have that token so that it's like you need to own Origin token specifically in order to start voting in Origin decisions. So Origin expects most people to be using Ethereum to tra make these transactions, but they also give you the option of using Origin token to make the transaction as well. And for a lot of people that don't necessarily use cryptocurrencies, right, for this thing to be mass adopted, you want people to be able to trade in fiat or USD or at least to see stable price values because the value of Ethereum could change drastically from day to day. So if I'm putting a listing of like a car or a house, I don't want that. I don't want to have to keep changing my Ethereum price because every day because it keeps changing. So what they're trying to do to combat that is by supporting on the fly conversions between fiat currencies and cryptocurrencies. 
basically they're using this equation which is the volume weighted average of the price of Ethereum and a bunch of different exchanges over a 24 hour period to summarize that together and give you what the fair market value is of Ethereum at any given day that will fluctuate according to whatever uh, fiat amount you placed your listing at. So that's a pretty interesting solution. They also said that they might just integrate stable coins like base coin or fragments to handle that. So I want to take a quick look at Origin's uh, roadmap and then their GitHub, see how far they've come thus far. So in September they launched their product brief and white paper and then in December is when they launched their alpha and the testnet. Right now, I think it's almost quarter two, public beta community sale. Yeah, they're doing their pre-sale right now. ICO details have not been announced yet. Quarter three, token distribution and launch of third party dApps and the 2019 fully decentralized services and governance. So looking at their GitHub, so here we have Origin.js, which is a library for interacting with Origin that third party developers can use. Also their demo dApp, which is pretty interesting. Let's look into that right now. So this demo dApp, let's try the live demo. So this is the most bare bones Origin viewing experience we're going to get. I just logged in with my MetaMask. We can see here all listings of all different kinds because right now there's no filters on it. It's just querying the whole thing, bringing up everything that everyone has made as a demo. And let's look at an example. Let's say this villa. I want to look at this villa and it'll tell me the details about the villa, the price, status, uh, other kinds of information. Let's see if I, so if I create a listing, you see I select for sale, housing, transportation, tickets, all the types of listings that are currently available. And if I want a new type of listing as a developer, I can go and create a new type of listing. So the benefit of this is that I can make whatever kind of thing that I want. Title, category, description, location, price, Ethereum. So yeah, it's very bare bones right now. It kind of proves out the concept. It's working. It's on a test net. It's pulling out the information from the Ethereum blockchain, the testnet blockchain, and then pulling it out from IPFS, the, all the images and the descriptions. So it'd work. If I want to create an Airbnb out of this, like Btoken is doing right now, I would simply just create a front end that would show all the housing listings and possibly create a new kind of category that has more in-depth details about the housing. Uh, so that really, that really makes the growth of Origin very, very large because you could be hosting decentralized housing, decentralized car sharing services, decentralized bike sharing services, decentralized marketplaces for freelancing, yeah, pretty much anything. Already a lot of people are building on top of Origin. Uh, a lot of these big projects are already happening. Kenya is building a uh, marketplace of services for the gig economy. Btoken is building a decentralized Airbnb on it. Uh, WeTrust is building decentralized insurance. And Proppy is building a property manager. So those are already four big verticals that already have said that they're going to build their service on top of Origin. So Origin has assembled a pretty solid team around this. Uh, a lot of people on the team have already exited other companies, so they've already proven that they can start a business in this space. Uh, a lot of these people use the services themselves, so they mention owning Airbnbs and managing these properties and that frustration of having to give up percentage after percentage fees to these middlemen that are managing their services for them. On the advisor side, pretty interesting advisors. Joey Krug from Augur on there. Uh, yeah, I would say it's a really rock solid team right now. I think they're gonna build something interesting. I'm interested in seeing how they work with New Cypher or Stable Coins or Uport and Civic to kind of let them handle what they're really great at and the origin will focus on what it seems to be really good at, which is creating this shared data layer for listings of goods and services. Uh, not much info on the ICO yet, it's still in the pre-sale, but we're sure to revisit it once more details for the ICO are announced. Also a disclaimer, this probably goes at the beginning, but this is not financial advice. Once the ICO comes out, do your due diligence. If you want to learn more about the team, learn more about the business model, 
I highly suggest we link to our Blockchain Brief interview with the founder, Matthew Liu, below. So definitely check that out. All right, everyone, I'm signing off now, and I will see you all at the next White Paper Deep Dive. Peace.